Hey there everyone, today is a magical day because we're going back to Walt Disney World and it feels amazing. Love knowing that the parks will be opening very, very soon. And today I'm gonna to go through every single detail that we know about now about the Disney Park Pass system. Disney released a lot of information. Let's break down all of it today. Let's start off first with the Disney Parks blog post and then we're gonna get into another page that goes into even more detail. Let's jump in. Now we know that the Disney Park Pass system is being used to manage attendance in the park. So the Disney parks only have a certain number of people inside at any given time for safety reasons. All guests, whether you're staying at a resort, annual pass holder, one day ticket holder, you will be required to have a park reservation prior to your arrival, very important. Now we're gonna dive into all the details about how you make a reservation, because Disney did release that information, but the overall point, you're gonna need a My Disney Experience account, a valid theme park ticket or annual pass, and if you have a resort reservation, linking that to your My Disney Experience. But we'll get back to this in a minute. One important detail that we did predict not too long ago, you will only be allowed to make one park reservation per day. So if you're going to the Magic Kingdom, you make your reservation there and you cannot park hop. That's very, very important. Right now with this system, no park hopping. This is very important for dining as well. For example, if you have a reservation to go to Epcot, you go and you have a great time, but you have a dining reservation at Be Our Guest in the same day, you cannot do that right now. It may change in the future, but it's only one park per day with the system as it is now. Now, if you have a park hopper ticket or park hopper plus ticket, you do have the opportunity to modify that reservation and change it and get a full refund, no fee at all. So go to the website. I'm gonna link it in the description of this video, DisneyWorld.com slash updates, they're gonna tell you exactly how to modify your ticket if you have Park Hopper on it. This does not include annual passes, by the way. If you have an annual pass, there's no refund for not being able to Park Hop with your annual pass. That's an important point. This last sentence in the paragraph here is very important because it tells us a lot. We hope to bring back the ability to visit more than one park per day soon, and we'll continue to offer these add-ons for 2021 ticket purchases. So even though they say 2021 here, that means for ticket purchases. That does not mean for, you know, they don't think you'll be able to park hop in for all of 2020. Is it possible? Absolutely. But they are not saying here that you will not be able to park hop in 2020. So they haven't confirmed it. They're just saying for now, no park hopping. That's an important distinction. Now in the parks blog post, they didn't give us exact dates, but I found the exact dates for when you can make your reservations. I'm going to tell you in just a moment, but they mentioned that in 2020, sometime in the summer of 2020, you'll be able to make other reservations for resorts. If you don't have a resort reservation now, now, you cannot make a new one until they announce it. So they're going to announce it later on in the summer of 2020. If you're looking to book an adventure to Walt Disney World for next year, 2021, you can do so by June 28th. So all these pur purchases will be available by that date. That's an important one. Now, Disney released a video along with the post here, and let's just go over it together. It's the No Before You Go post. In it, they mentioned that new measures, including park reservations, temperature screenings, and face coverings will be required. We knew that would be the case, but they wanted to reiterate that, and park attendance will be managed through a new park reservation system, what we're going over today. And they go over a few of those details about how you're going to pick a date and then you can go and make those reservations. Now we already knew that temperature checks were going to be a thing at Walt Disney World. We were told about that but they wanted to reiterate it here. Anything over 100.4, so 100.4 and above cannot go into the park and anyone in your party included, so that they included that. Any guest over the age of two must wear a face mask at all times, any kind of face covering, and you're, you don't have to wear it while eating or swimming. That's, a, that's an important update. They also mentioned that they'll be limiting the attendance in the parks, and there will be areas for you to stand behind those you know, lines to keep distancing while on property. That's very important. They also go into how they're gonna be cleaning a lot more, and they're talking about the really, really important need to have the My Disney Experience app for mobile payments, for checking reservations, all these things, they really reiterated that. And this is important because it gets into the next paragraph of their post here. Now this next paragraph ties into the video really well, but it shocked me just a little bit. It shouldn't because we know Disney's thinking about the future, but I didn't realize it would be coming this quickly. Let's go over it. As you begin planning your upcoming visits, we're also exploring engaging ways for guests to use their mobile tech to experience the magic as the use of phones and apps continues to evolve. In 2021, we plan to unveil an innovative new offering as part of the My Disney Experience app that will bring features of a magic band 
to your smart device, building on the app's existing digital key feature. With this new offering on the horizon, we will be, ready for this, retiring complimentary Magic Band distribution to Disney Resort Hotel guests for new reservations with arrivals beginning January 1st, 2021. I had to reread that sentence a few times. I really did, and I was thinking to myself, how could this have happened? How are we getting to this point where Magic Band, free Magic Band distribution for resort guests will no longer be offered? I was, I was sad. I was sad when I read that. But then I just kind of read back and said to myself, okay, this is because we're going to see Magic Bands on the phone, basically. Just as I was starting to get situated with that idea, Disney comes in with this surprise. Disney Resort Hotel guests will continue to have the option to purchase new Magic Bands at a discount, and we'll be introducing even more colors and designs featuring favorite Disney characters in the future. So even though complimentary Magic Bands will be coming to an end by next year, January 1st, 2021, they'll still be offered until that point, you can still purchase a Magic Band. So it doesn't sound like Disney is ending Magic Bands. That's not, that's not what this is. This is the option to transition to more of a mobile Magic Band. Let's call it that. Guests who prefer not to purchase a discounted Magic Band will be able to use the My Disney Experience app or a Key to the World card during their visit. So does that mean a, a QR code on your phone or perhaps just like, I don't know, NFC, Bluetooth? I really don't know this tech at all, but you, you kind of pass by, your phone is nearby, and it kind of automatically knows that that's you. Is this the future right there? I have no idea, but Disney's clearly leaning in to whatever this future is. They go back again and they say, we will still offer Magic Bands in retail locations and on shopdisney.com, and guests will be able to continue to use their wearables throughout Walt Disney World Resort. So again, they are not discontinuing Magic Bands. I know there are some who have said, oh, Magic Bands are coming to an end. Perhaps one day, but this is not what this is. Disney's just saying you have more options available to you. You can still use Magic Bands, you can. But if you wanna to switch to a digital Magic Band on your smartphone, you can do that as well. I personally see this as a win-win. If you love having Magic Bands on, you really enjoy walking around with one and showing your style with a Magic Band, you have the opportunity to. Disney's not taking that away. You can even purchase new ones. They're coming out with new designs. But if you don't like using Magic Bands, or maybe you don't have several other Magic Bands that you can you can get, or you don't really wanna buy one, you can always just use your smartphones. This, this is where everyone wins, in my opinion. Disney went into more detail talking about the Reservation Center. If you have any questions, you can give them a call or email. But let's go even deeper into this reservation system and how it's going to work. To enter any Disney park, you're going to need valid admission and a reservation for that day for that park. Very, very important. They're going to say when that system comes to an end, and eventually it will, but for now, it's required. This system is required for everyone over the age of three. So if you have a toddler with you who's under the age of three, apparently the system is not required for them. That's important. Now on to those dates that I know we're all thinking about. If you have a resort reservation at Walt Disney World, you can make these reservations to the parks on June 22nd, 2020. Very, very important date. If you're an annual pass holder without a resort stay, you can make your reservation to one of the parks June 26th, 2020. And if you just have an existing ticket, you can make your reservations two, la two days later, June 28th, 2020. Now, if we scroll down a little bit here, don't be too worried, but I want to read this to you. Park reservations will be available through September 26, 2021, based on your resort stay and ticket eligibility. Yeah, I know what you're thinking, Michael, this system's gonna be required for more than a year. Are you kidding? Don't worry, don't worry. This is Disney covering their bases. They wanna make sure that you are 100% safe and the system can be in place up until that date. Remember, there are many guests who make reservations way out in advance. So let's say you have a reservation for June of 2021 and you wanna start thinking about those days you wanna be in the parks, you can make the reservation. So you don't have to worry about it. Disney's including that system all the way through that date. Now, does that mean that this system will be required all the way through June of 2021? 2021 no way. Disney is playing it safe here. They want to make sure that if it is required, that guests are still covered and can still have these magical experiences. But I would guess, and I think Disney's thinking the same, by the time this is all said and done, hopefully well before September of 2021, they can say, okay, system's gone. If you made a reservation, that's fine. You can still go, but you won't need a reservation. See what I mean? In my opinion, it's much better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. And I think Disney's thinking the same thing. They don't think they're going to need it through September 2021. 
2021, but they want to be careful and have it there just in case. Because if you have a reservation and you don't need one, no harm. Okay, now let's get into how the system will work, how you could actually go online and make your reservation. It's a four-step process. First up, you need to link your admission to your Disney account, whether it's an annual pass, a ticket, and the resort reservation, don't forget, gotta be linked to your account. If you don't have an account, you can create an account. I'm gonna link a lot of very helpful links in the description of this video, and you're gonna link the admission to your Disney account, and then move on to step two. Step two, you have to create your party, so it's really important that everyone in your party does have that ticket and make sure the ticket or annual pass is linked to the account and then family and friends li link them together and you have that family and friends list so you can plan for friends and family you're traveling with. Disney goes through some of the details about adding a family member or friend to that list and then talks about how you can make their reservation as well. The reason why you want to have that family and friends list is because these reservations are going to go really fast. So if you're online and you see, oh, there's availability for me to go to Magic Kingdom on, let's just pretend July... 17th, just as an example, and you don't have your family and friends linked, you go back into the system a few hours later to link your family and friends, and that reservation time is gone. That's why it's really important to link that. And you can do it now. You don't have to wait until the system is open to link family and friends to the account. You can link or do steps one and two before the system opens. Now on to the system itself, and don't forget, you've got to wait till the system opens. Refer to those earlier dates to make sure that you know it's available for you, but then you're going to select a date on a calendar that you'll see on the website site, select the park that you want, and select a time. The date and theme park makes a lot of sense, but select a time. You may be saying to yourself, Michael, are we going to be limited to the amount of time we're allowed in the parks? We don't know. The truth of the matter is we don't know, but if I had to guess, I would say no. You're not going to be limited to the amount of time you can stay in the park except for closing of the park. It's when you enter the park that they want to make sure they coordinate correctly. The reason why I think they have it this way is because they don't want thousands of people coming to the gate at the exact same time. So maybe there'll be a, a 9 o'clock time period you can go, and a 10 o'clock, and a, maybe a 10.30, 11, something like that, where you arrive at those times. They're going to ask you to wait until that time to arrive. So no lining up in advance would be my guess. Step four, you need to confirm your reservation and review some of those liability waivers. You're going to have to sign some waivers prior to going because it is a global situation, so there are going to be some waivers to sign, but then you confirm and then you're done. Once confirmed, you'll see your reservation in the My Plans section of the My Disney Experience mobile app or website. The first question that I had after reading this, can you make another reservation for another day? Let's say several days in a row. You want to go for three or four days at every single park. As far as I read here and as far as Disney has released, there is no limit to the number of days that you can reserve. Now, I do want to mention that I did hear a rumor, not confirmed by Disney, but I did hear a rumor that if you have an annual pass and you book several days, let's say a Monday and a Thursday and a Saturday. And let's pretend for a moment that you miss all three of them for any reason. We, we don't know what the reason is, but let's say you miss all three. Apparently, and this is a rumor again, not confirmed, you will be kind of blocked from making any other reservations for maybe 30 or 60 days. That is not confirmed, but I wanted to pass that information on to you just so that I can say that, you know, if you're planning on going, absolutely make that reservation, have a great time. But if you're not, you know, you're not thinking about going, don't make the reservation. I think that's really important. Now, I do want to note that Disney did say that you can cancel a reservation up until the day before. So if you find out something, you know, happens, you can't go to Walt Disney World on a certain day, you can cancel it, but it's got to be the day before, not the day of. Disney gave us even more details that I wanted to go over today. In-park dining, I want to read this for you. At this time, dining reservations are not available for in-park dining experiences. Reservation will resume at a later date. When in-park dining initially becomes available, you'll need valid park admission, a reservation for park entry and a dining reservation to dine at an in-park table service restaurant. Dining reservations do not guarantee admission to the park. So even though dining reservations are not open right now, given this information, they will be opening soon. We don't know if that's going to be the very first day the parks will be open. I would assume so. But reservations will be starting soon, and then you'll have the opportunity to go to those table service restaurants. But keep in mind, it does not guarantee you admission to the park. So make sure your reservation for the park and reservation for dining is the same park, because that's the only park you can go to on that day. Now, for those annual pass holders in our Disney family, Disney did share a bit more about the reservation system for us. Disney noted that during the limited capacity period, it may be difficult for annual pass holders to get park reservations to visit on certain dates. To help manage capacity, total reservation dates held at one time will be limited. More details will be shared in the coming weeks. So you can only have a certain 
certain number of days held at any given time. It does make sense, you know, they didn't say how many, but it does make sense. My guess is you'll have the opportunity to book somewhere between maybe 5, 10, possibly 15 days at any given time as an annual pass holder. That would be my guess, don't know for sure, but that's my guess right now. We'll learn more soon. They also mentioned that some park benefits and features, I would imagine that means park hopping, that's my guess here, will not be available during periods of limited capacity. Also, park experiences and offerings will be modified and subject to limited availability or even closure, that's important. They also mentioned that blackout dates still Still do apply, so double check that your annual pass doesn't have any blackout dates when you're trying to go if you are an annual pass holder. Now with all of that being said, Disney did save the best for last. As we prepare for the reopening of the parks, we're planning a special preview opportunity for annual pass holders. All right, we look forward to sharing details with you soon. That's going to be great. So we have the very special opportunity to go back, preview it a little bit, and then maybe there'll be other days where it'll be a little bit more limited, but at least we have this very special opportunity. Disney also shared a few smaller updates for those with resort hotels and who are looking for activities at those resorts, the tours and experiences. There are many that have been canceled that's important, and a few shops that will be opening at Disney Springs as well. Now there is no doubt in my mind that we all wish this system did didn't have to be in place the way it is. Absolutely no doubt about it, but given the circumstances, I think that this is probably the best situation. We have special annual pass holder preview days, reservations to certain parks on certain days, at least we're opening back up. I like to see the positives of these things, and to me, this is a positive step forward. In addition, I want to mention that Disney confirmed that Mickey's Not-So-Scary Halloween Party has been canceled for all of 2020. There will be no Halloween parties this year. Devastating news, I know, and if you have a ticket, it will be refunded, but I like to focus on the positive. That's me. I'm, I'm thinking of, you know what, we've got next year is not so scary, and maybe they'll add even more. We'll get a costume that'll be, you know, the fantastic, something like that. I like to think of the positives here. And yes, it's not a situation we wanted. We all were looking forward to something like that, but for safety reasons, they have canceled Mickey's Not-So-Scary Halloween Party. On a positive note, the Epcot International Food and Wine Festival will be starting before you know it. Believe it or not, this is the longest festival ever, starting on July 15th, 2020, running all the way through the fall. It is going to be unlike any other. We're going to have the opportunity to try all sorts of amazing food. I cannot wait for it. Those are a few of the big updates from Disney. There is no doubt we're going to learn even more in the coming days. Let me know in the comments below what you think about all this, what you're looking forward to at the food and wine, and how you're going to have even more time to make a Halloween costume that's the best of the best for 2021. Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much for being a part of the magic with me today. Until next time, have a magical day.